All right, everyone. I think we should. Are we there? Maybe. <laughs> let's go. Okay, I see. Let's go from Aaron. I see hello from Nick. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Let's go then. All right, so I see Aaron dancing. She's got three dancing shoes. <laughs> We enjoyed the announcements from the Ariotos. The announcements were funny. So fun. Thank you, Justin, for now. Hello. Are we good to go? Yeah, we're good to go. We're a little bit blue. But that's okay. Blue, blue. A blue light going on. <laughs> All right, well, I can make you. Orange. Stop. <laughs> Cut it out. We can make you <laughs> gray. Oh, 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 oh. That looks like we're in uh, the 50s. Yeah, that's a bit dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, Look, now it's wanna... Asia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we're like teenagers trying to. I'm not trying We're to. much better color in real life. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I have the halo, of course, because I'm holy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you do. You do holy. Let's see. Oh, I wish I had a little color correction in it, but then I couldn't. But that's... The, that's pretty close. That's a that's a wireless... That's a that's a webcam. So what do you, got, what do you expect? What do you expect? <gasps> Okay, so everybody's there. Let's see. She says, thanks. Hey, Dave. Good talking to you today, Dave. Dave, Dave may be moving. Well, I don't know if I can say that publicly. Let's not do that now. We'll do that later. Yes, we're starting a business in Florida. <laughs> and uh, Dave Horvath is going to help run it. It's going to be amazing. Stop it. You're starting trouble. <laughs> No, we are going to start a business in Florida, and um, it's going to be fun. Isn't that right, Dave? Say, see, he says, hey, let's see what he says. Let's see if he responds. He may say I'm a liar. Let's see. Go right ahead. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had some brainstorming today. I always, I always keep those things secret, but you shared those. Whereas I, I tell all the presents before I get yeah, them. Because presents are supposed like... to be a surprise. It's supposed to be a surprise. We're totally different. The, this is not a surprise. We are actually setting seeds up for the anticipation immigration that's watching right now. Oh. <laughs> if I can just say Forget it. you, Canada. Just so we can just Man. say it truthfully. You can't barely watch the news. I, I You know, because I'm from Europe, I watch the news in Europe too. We're getting here. If I ever watch it. Well, the thing is, is Dave is really an expert and a specialist at what he does. And so we yes. need him to come into America. Yes, we do. He's specialist. Yeah, he's specialist. So <laughs> nobody else can do what he, he's going to do. I believe it. It's true. Yeah. All right. So hallelujah. Welcome to America, Dave. You need to watch the, um, all of the Welcome to America movies before you come. <laughs> yeah. no, don't. We'll set you up with some guns. No. no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, now we're Facebook just your algorithm's crazy. <laughs> Facebook algorithm. Guns, guns, guns. Trumpites, 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 Trumpites. Stop. Trumpisms. <laughs> no, we are citizens of heaven. Praise the Lord. Only our feet are on this uh, planet, but our minds are not. Yes. Our minds are in heavenly places. That's right. Our feet are on this earth. Amen. So that's about it. That's the whole message I wanted to share. That's all this. That's, all <laughs> that's all. the whole picture in one statement, pretty much. You know, I wanted to share about when it comes to sickness and disease um, and anything really that is causing these temples, bodies. Are we frozen? I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. The, the, the video is just not moving, but maybe that's normal. I think it's because I'm trying to get rid of it. Okay. Um, let me I, I think I pushed pause. <laughs> They're still talking to us. Maybe. Okay. We're still good people. Yeah, I see. I they see changed that. all. They changed the layout, so I'm trying to just get to comments, 
and it always has to put someone's face there. It's like, oh, dude. All right. There you go. We're keeping this on our toes. There you go. So just so you know, uh, earlier this day, we only had one appointment left for our uh, Zoom curology rooms and uh, healing rooms. Not sure if that one spot is still available, but if you have urgent need, um, either physically, emotionally, mentally, you're welcome to make an appointment. Um, and you can call, uh, just type in the word healing to the number 206. Five six seven fourteen hundred. What's the song? Two oh six. Five six seven fourteen hundred. Anyway, I don't know make anyone up else your that sings song. that song. That's how I remember stuff. That's it's, how I have yeah, the only one an I know. arsenal of scriptures from all the songs in kids' church. Come on. So um, anyway, what what we want to do when it comes to sickness and disease? Now, if you're not a child of God, then Healing is God's mercy extended to you. It is a demonstration of the Lord revealing that he is almighty God. And one of his names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. And so, but as a child of God, we now have to change our relationship with everything. You know, it's like... Uh, if you if you uh, were not a, a somebody's child, right? If you're an orphan, your relationship with the world is completely different than someone who has parents that take care of them. You can completely change now in your relationship with everything, whether it's your need, uh, whether it is something that is wrong, an enemy. You know, I, I didn't only have parents. I had a pretty feisty grandmother that was pretty much at our house every day. And then I had three big brothers and two big sisters. So, you know, when there was bullies, there was lots of opinions of what I should do to the bullies uh, when it came to the dinner table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if I'd been an orphan walking the street, my relationship with uh, bullies would be completely different. Because uh, I especially have a really fun brother called Michelle. He had a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I told him there were these three boys. You know, I was afraid to leave my cul-de-sac because they would always be there. And um, they would always start, you know, bullying me, teasing me. And so um, he goes, well why don't we go for a little ride? And it was, you know, in those days, all very free. So uh, he got on the motorcycle and they put me on one of his knees and uh, I'm leaning on, holding on to the, you know, handlebars and he, he's steering and we found the boy. And my brother is a very big guy. <laughs> he also was very good at judo and he's just like a fighter. But super fun. And so he had a little talk with the boys. And he didn't actually say anything bad or mean. But just the fact that he was talking to them, <laughs> that caused the, that to be the last time ever that they even talked to me. They just avoided me. <laughs> and all he, I remember him saying was, hey, boys, so you know my little sister. <laughs> and they were like, yes. Oh, are you nice? Are you nice, boys? Yes, <laughs> and that's really the only things that he said. And then, and then we went back, and it was so fun. And then we just went for a little ride, and that's the end of my bully problem. Well, it is the same with the devil. Our relationship has now changed with the devil. Our relationship has changed with sickness. At least it should be. We have to change our minds uh, and change our relationship with everything. So. Okay. When, when Jesus said, I, I've given you power and authority to tread upon serpents and on scorpions, of course, you have to go back to, you know, uh, the first mention in the Bible, the law of first mention. Yes. Whenever you see something, you don't know exactly what the Lord is meaning. You go back to the first mention in the word of God. First mention, of course, of the serpent is the devil. And uh, scorpions, right? Uh, there's, there's, uh, whenever there was a land that was cursed, there's scorpions. There's uh, some references in other passages in the Bible that would, would bite and, and kill. So killers and deceivers, right? That is what it's, 
what it's referring to, the serpent who deceives. Um, so the first time Adam and Eve spoke about the serpent, Eve said, it's, it's the serpent, he deceived me. Right, so he's the deceiver. Yes, he's the the one who steals, kills, and destroys. At least if he's allowed to. And so then Jesus says, "I have given you power to tread, or trample upon serpents and scorpions." That means to trample underfoot, meaning completely annihilate them okay. to where they are crushed. Um, and over all the power of the devil, if you were even confused or in the future, some kind of scholar would come up with some dumb explanation of what that meant. Then he clarifies it even further. And over all the power of the devil. Now, I don't know if you've ever meditated on that. I have meditated several times on what all the power of the devil is. So you think about all the power of the devil. Of course, first he steals, he kills, he destroys. He deceives, he accuses, right? Those are some of his powers, his fortes, <laughs> the things he enjoys doing, um, leading astray, um, you know, causing a spirit of fear and intimidation. And so when you understand that, Jesus says, I've given you power over all the power of the devil, and including the fact that he had the power over death at one point until Jesus conquer death and, and the grave. Um, and by no means shall anything harm you. Now that immediately uh, causes you to have a different relationship with the devil. He cannot harm you. And he, God has given you power to tread upon all of his power. He's yeah. given you authority over all the power of the devil. Now, I know some people, they create lots of horror scenarios about the devil, uh, but I always like to uh, study from people that have had fruit. You know, Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. So we like to study, uh, for, unfortunately, they're with the Lord now, so it's on <laughs> us, right? The baton has been passed. But if you think about people that actually practice these words of Jesus, uh, you know, the T.L. Osborne, Daisy Osborne, John G. Lake, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, more Cirillo, um, Lesser Sumrall, you know, so just to name a few. <laughs> Whenever you hear them speak about the devil in the past, uh, they never made a big deal about him. Now, they made a big deal about people suffering under his bondage. They made a big deal about setting those people free, but never did they speak about him in an intimidated way. And so today I want to challenge you to start building a, a mindset, a framework in your mind on purpose uh, about your authority over all the power of the devil. You know, we can know things. We can kind of know generic information. It's like, okay, we have a, some kind of, you know, little oven thingy. I kind of know what it does. I kind of uh, have browsed on the first page of the instructions. <laughs> But if my husband, who's been asking for roasted uh, Brussels sprouts uh, with garlic and olive oil and all that, if he would say right now, uh, so can we have that tonight? I, I actually don't, I'm not acquainted with how that thing even turns on. I actually don't know. I know there's a plug on the back and that I should probably plug that one in. I should probably remove all the paperwork and plastic from the inside of the little oven. I know that from experience, right? Uh, so there's a few things I know, a general sense, but I don't know really intimately uh, my relationship with that little oven. So it's the same with the devil. If you don't actually know from self-study, building a mindset and a framework of my relationship and dominion over the devil, then it's gonna be no good. You're not gonna use it. And now your relationship with sickness and disease and attack against you is completely different. Now you are like someone in need of the doctor, right? Now you're going to be um, in need of someone who is, who is being bullied 
and needs a big brother to step in. And fortunately, God provides all of that. And that is amazing. You should definitely make the best use of all the gifts that are in the body of Christ, especially those that have been called to be in covenant with you, to cover you, uh, to shepherd you and the elders in your life. So that is all part of the body of Christ, but it is not okay to stay there. That is, you know, can you imagine if I still would call my brother Michelle and go, hey, I'm going to be in Amsterdam next week. I'm just afraid that those three bullies are going to be there again. Okay, that would be really retarded, right? I'm like 52 years old and I still need my brother to put me on his knee on the motorcycle and find the bullies. No, my relationship with those guys is completely, is completely changed, right? Nobody's going to be bullying me at my age. Okay, so, so there's a growing up that has to happen. I now understand the psychology of bullies. And uh, if I wanted to, I could probably bully them back, which I don't want to do because now I have the love of God. So now my relationship with those guys is to make sure that they know, know Jesus if I ever saw them again. Not that I even remember their names, but so... It's the same with the devil. It's time for us to change our relationship. Now, how do we do that? We have to build a framework uh, of the mind of Christ. And, and, you know, today I actually posted, this is a little commercial because I have uh, a, a uh, reigning dot citadel Instagram page uh, that is our women's ministry. And uh, that is a women's ministry that is a training ministry to raise women of God up in the Northwest and from the West to the rest to rule and reign with Christ. That's the whole point, to cause women to grow up in maturity and to become actually people who will demonstrate Jesus is alive, proof of life of Jesus and destroying the works of the devil. And so... Today, I posted a little free sermon that I preached before, and uh, my, my encouragement for the women is to study this and then preach it, preach it yourself somewhere. But the thing about your mind is that you have to build it on purpose. You know, uh, Jesus is talking about um, his word as a building materials. You know, he talks about if if you're going to be building on a foundation of sand, you know, which is probably just opinions of man, CNN news, whatever, then when the storm comes, you're going to sink. But if you build it on the word of God, because God's word is also building material, then storms will come also and the wind will blow hard, but you will not be moved. You will be exactly the same as before the storm came. And so, uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, remember your feet are on the earth, we are not waging war according to the flesh. In other words, we don't fight with armor. We don't fight with politics. We don't fight with money. Uh, we don't fight with humanistic arguments, right? For our weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. So, so that's what we're fighting. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. So it's all a thought battle. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So this is powerful because uh, the steps that we have to take is first of all, that we accept that we're in a war. It describes yeah. here. We are in a war. You are in a war. You are not here to decide, okay, the most important thing is that I get my dream house and that I decorate it farmhouse style and that I get a labradoodle because those are look really cute on Instagram pictures. And, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look like this this summer in a bikini. Okay, that's not the whole gist of, of our life here on earth. Our life here on earth is that we're part of the body of Christ and there's a war going on, people. <laughs> okay, We should be awake to this right now. Um, and so then, then we have to accept that, that uh, truth with the right measure of zeal and the right measure of, of spiritual fortitude 
and and uh, a mindset to be weaponized, fully weaponized, and fully ready for the battle. So that's first. You've got to you've got to accept the fact that you're in a battle. That's how you change your relationship with the devil, and you be, you you get over on him instead of under his dominion. And then second, you have to take. Uh, first, take care of all intruders that were in your land. So the intruders, you have to get rid of them before you can even secure your borders and make your life right. You have to get rid of those that don't belong, right? Fear thoughts. You have to cast those down with the word of God. Intimidation, a fear of death, uh, offenses, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, battles, depression, heaviness you know, anger, whatever it may be, you destroy these strongholds because these are not you, you have the mind of Christ, but we destroy these strongholds that uh, have tried to build the, the, themselves into something that is not movable in your life. And it may have started generations ago. Who knows how long those strongholds have been around and they've been passed on. They're just habitual. So the second thing is that we are going to clear out the, the land. So, you know, a farmer doesn't just put two cows or whatever um, bulls on, in front of a plow and just say, well, let's just, uh, you know, throw some seed in there. No, they're going to till the ground to try to find rocks, boulders in the ground and get rid of it. So that's, that's the same way with a farmer, but it is the same way for a warrior. A warrior is going to try to find the strongholds of the enemy. If you study World War II, you understand that they didn't just attack random places. They didn't just attack Joe's farm, you know. No, they're going to attack strongholds where they knew that the Nazis uh, had their military stronghold. That is what they were going to bomb the snot out of. Come on, and they did that. So that's what we do. We are going to bombard with heavenly bombs of the word of God, the strongholds that are in our land. So again, with a militant attitude, you have to say, you know what? I'm going to do this every day, three times a day. I'm going to do a military assault uh, on the enemy regarding this thing that I know is in my life that does not belong in me because the angels don't have it. You know, Jesus doesn't have that. The father doesn't have that. So, you know, it could be so many things. Nowadays, worldliness, my goodness, people are full of division. People value the news more than the word of God. You got to war against that and be heavenly minded. Set your mind on things above. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, inferiority complexes. It can be self-pity. It can be, you know, anxiety, it could be so many things. Then, then uh, next is design your mind. Now, this is very important because whenever you build something, whenever you understand about a military attack uh, and you go into a territory, you also have a purpose for that after the war. So now that we've destroyed the enemy, we've had the right attitude, we're in a war, we've annihilated him, we've taken out the strongholds, now we have to have a purpose for that land. So, you know, when the Nazis were destroyed in, in Germany, um, Canada and America and England came together and said, we have to have a purpose for Germany because these four uh, people in Germany they deserve to live in a way where they can thrive and have happy families uh, without the tyranny of Hitler. Now that Hitler is removed and the Nazis are being brought to justice, now the people can go back to farming and to being a doctor and to being, you know, whatever they're called to do. So they started to invest in Germany, many, many millions and millions of dollars. Uh, and, um, they ended up having a design for that nation, making sure that things were healthy. Same with your mind. If you see your mind as a land, you have to design it. How should I design it? You need to design it according to the kingdom of God. You are seated in heavenly places. So you have to design it with righteousness, with peace, and with joy in the Holy Ghost. Those three things have to be built. And 
No, we, we form Christ in others in prayer by praying scriptures over them, but we also form Christ in us. So for as when it comes to this land of ours, our bodies, our minds, our attitudes, our motivations, we need to take what heaven uh, says we should build. We should build the kingdom of God everywhere we go. So we build righteousness. I find scriptures about righteousness and how I am righteous and what righteousness is. And then peace. I build with the material of the word of God. I build peace with the word of God in my life. I declared over my mind, peace in my body, peace in my heart, peace in my relationships, peace in my finances. Come on, financial peace, right? Peace everywhere, peace with my enemies. And I build my land, the land and the framework of my life with the word of God. And then I take scriptures of joy and I declare and build by speaking out loud the word of God about joy, about my emotions about my heart, about my thoughts, about uh, my children, you know, all these different things. So then after that, you cram your land full with the word of God. Come on, you continue, not just, okay, I'm free from strongholds and I feel much better. No, now you cram yourself with the word of God. I have one last scripture and That's it excellent. says in Matthew 7, 24, uh, Jesus says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. So you find these scriptures and then you act them out. You, you behave accordingly. You decide accordingly. You change your relationship with things and people and with God and with the devil according to the scriptures. Um, and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So that is powerful. It's building material. The word of God is building material. Um, then the rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and slammed against that house. Yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house. And it fell and great was its fall. Amen. So, so understand that we're in a war. Winds are coming. More storms are coming. Storms that are bigger than the last storm. But it doesn't matter to the person who on purpose changes their relationship with everything. If, if the whole kingdom of darkness came against you. It cannot move you if you are founded on the word of God and you are uh, become a stronghold. That's what we talked about this week, to become a stronghold of the Lord. You know, you can become a stronghold of the Lord. Your angels are assigned to you for specific things. So you want to cooperate with them by speaking the word of God. Uh, the word of God activates you. It activates the Holy Spirit. Like when he was hovering over the waters, it activates the angels of the Lord and you become a stronghold for the Lord in your life and in your influence, in your sphere of influence. And so it's important that we see the word of God, not just as an encouragement, because I, you know, when I Google like scriptures, it's always given us a comfort and it is comforting but never as a building material, you know? Yeah. But that's really what it is. That's how Jesus describes his word. Oh, that's, very that's good. I like it. Yeah. One person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the word of God is, is, I mean, when God speaks, when you speak, you speak on purpose. Yeah. When God speaks, he speaks on purpose. When the devil speaks, he speaks on purpose. Right. And there's a purpose behind every word. It's only um, only us <laughs> that we think yeah. that when we speak, it's 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 frivolous. You know, this it's just passing words. Yeah, that goes along with what I want to share. Oh, nice! Boom! It usually is that way when we're popping, flowing in the Holy popping Ghost. them in the face, y'all. Yes. All right. So want to want to let you know there was two spaces available. Okay. So if you are wanting to get special prayer prayer with someone's intentional focus on your need listening to the lord with words of knowledge words of wisdom 
wanting to have the grace of God on it, I want to encourage you to, to go ahead and find the number right here. It's going to be put there again. So when we'll do that and do, you know, the song, you know, the song. So six, five, six, seven, 1400. If you don't know the song yet, you should know the song. I don't know the song. <laughs> it's not you know. the song. That's why it's hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> remember the song. Like, uh. So, so if you want to remember the song, you can. If not, you can just look at someone's feed here. The feed is going to be there. <laughs> this is important for you to be able to 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 have someone agree with you. Uh, the scripture is so clear about the power of agreement. Yes. Uh, everything in the world is is has a place for the power of agreement. Covenant relationships, the power of agreement. Yep. Becoming a member at a, at some place, power of agreement. The power of agreement is what makes the world go round, mm -hmm. and the power of disagreement is what makes the world fall apart. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to lead me into what I want to talk about: the power of agreement and the power of disagreement. Wow! Yeah. And the the the, the powerful picture of it is in Second Corinthians, chapter two, verse ten. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse ten. Don't forget. As you're turning there, we have a special event coming up this weekend after service on Sunday morning. You want to make sure that you tune in and you jump into a Zoom call with myself and Les Brown. We're going to be teaching on the and word. It's free. It's, and it's, it's free. It's absolutely free. It's, I'm so it's, excited. Yeah, I, I, it's not free for me. I'm paying him well, to connect. Yeah. But the fact is, is we're offering this free and God just wants me to give away stuff. This is my year of generosity. No, you've been giving so everything I am, away for free. I am, <laughs> I am really, it is free for you. It is free. But I want yeah, you to know, but it's not don't free. come expecting this is going to be content that comes from, from free. It is, yeah. it is paid. But because the Lord loves you, there is there is freedom. Yes. Uh, he wants you to be able to communicate. And it means to me, the world is not going to end. We just need to be better positioned to be to be able to communicate the word of God and be able to communicate yes. the message and the vision that God has for us. And how to become a great communicator. Outstanding, I mean, ups, outstanding communicator. Yes, because you can know even the word of God, but make a real mess of it, right? When you try to express it and people will be confused. And the number one fear that people have is communication, mm -hmm. so speaking in front of people. So we're going to teach not only how to speak in front of people, but you have an opportunity to know how to communicate, yes. what to communicate, and to be able to build your own story into mm -hmm. such a message that is powerful and potent. Multiply um, your talents. So we're going to be able to Ooh. do that. That's going to be very, very fun. Great. All so right, so 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter, in, in, in Kim, if you can put the the uh, website there it's, it's going it's going to be speak with power dot today dot today speak with power dot today if you will help me put that there kim's our assistant she's wonderful she actually volunteered to help with the with the oven that will help, oh. will help get the, the brussels sprouts <laughs> kicking off because i've been asking for the i've been asking i just haven't had time to read the booklet and in me i plug in turn on yeah i'll figure it out but I don't want to mess with stuff. But if I break it, then then I have to tell Kim who who moved it, who blessed us with it. Yeah, so, you don't want to do it. I don't want to break it. So Kim, you'll have to help us. All right. So Second Corinthians chapter two, verse ten. Yes. You ready? Yes. Um, now, whom you whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. Wow. I think this is the power of, <laughs> of community. I mean, and, and it's it's really important to know that this is not just like this is Paul. Talking. This is not just yeah. This is Paul, but he's also speaking to authorities. He's speaking to people who can hold people in responsible responsible for what their actions wow. are. These these are people who he says, if you forgive them, I forgive them. Now the, he's of course over them, but he says, if you forgive them, I forgive them. What a power of community is that. That's a powerful community where you can say, well, if you forgive them, I also let's, forgive them. That let's just, let's just go ahead and make this be in, whatever it takes to be in unity, whatever it takes to be in unity, let's do that because unity is so valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, today is a day where it could be unified or divide, divided. Tomorrow's going to be another day where they're going to be unified. Every, day. every day is going to be another day where we're going to be unified or divided. And what I am noticing that in the world, this world that we're living in, the spirit of forgiveness and unforgiveness is the rampant, uh, it's rampant. So people are um, making decisions on who they will be with, who they won't be with, who they like, who they don't like. 
in 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 so much of the things so many of the things that i'm looking at it has to do with (laughs) forgiveness and unforgiveness period yeah uh it in yes the devil's at play in work he's definitely working all of that but his number one strategy is is for is forgiveness or unforgiveness he wants he wants to be in control and what's forgiven Mm-hmm. And he wants to be in control of what's not forgiven, right? You know, yeah, he wants he's... both. He doesn't want you just to be non-forgiving. He doesn't want yeah. you just to be unforgiving. He wants you to forgive the wrong things. Yeah, unrighteousness. <laughs> he wants you to forgive That's the wrong Robert things. Says it's evil. And he wants you to hold on to unforgiveness for the right things. Right. So that means that it's it's so contrary. Yeah, it's, it's opposite it's of the of the word. And so this is important that you see. So he says. Then he says, continuing in verse 10, for if I indeed have forgiven anything, if I've forgiven anything, I I have forgiven that one for your sake in the presence of Christ. Now that's where the forgiveness needs to take place. He's like, I'm forgiving them, not in your, I'm forgiving them for your sake, but in the presence of Christ. Now we could actually start dealing with this a little bit because the Bible says, don't bring anything before Christ if you have unforgiveness. I think Paul's actually saying, mm-hmm. I actually may have a grudge here. I could have a grudge here, but in because for your sake and for because I want to be in the presence, I'm going in the presence of Christ. I'm not holding anything here. Mm-hmm. I'm holding nothing here. I'm for I'm forgiving, I'm releasing so that we can get this thing going moving forward. Because this, what is it? Why is Paul need to forgive? Why is it going to help them? to forgive why is god why is it important and why is it important for him to say i'm not only just doing this for my sake but i'm doing it in the your sake and in the presence of christ in the presence of christ so it's important that when you have a hard time forgiving that you need to know where to go go to the presence of the lord when you get into the presence of the lord you should see things differently you can't see things the way that the devil wants you to see them in the presence of god if the devil is wanting you to forgive the wrong things and hold grudges to the rock, you know, others, yeah. then, then you get into the presence of the Lord, that's going to dramatically shift. You may be thinking in your mind, what does this have to do with healing? A lot. We're going to dig into yeah. that moment. Which, you know, both is very true because there have been times of people that I'm super fond of hmm. that you just want to like brush it off real quick. Let's just get, get past this because it's so uncomfortable. But the Lord actually wants to correct it. And, and yeah. then and when you get in the presence of the Lord, you know, there have been times in our church, even the people, you know, if they sinned, I just want to brush over it and go, oh, I love them so much. I just want to say, okay, you're sorry. Let's just move on. But then the Lord is saying, this is my church. This is my body. And I want you to deal with it. Yes. Because it will help happen again and then cause more havoc. So, so sometimes we go too light and then there's other times where it's like, okay, this is personally so offensive to me that you don't want to let it go. Right. Cause it's so personal. Like you're all up in my world. And so, so yeah, you have to get in the presence of the Lord to see it in his light because with him, there's only truth. And yeah, because with God, re- repentance is the only thing that's forgiven. Yeah. Things are not forgiven unless it's repented of. That's right. That's why there's going to be hell. There's, the there's, I forgive, forgive me. Well, that doesn't, that's not a change of mind, a change of heart. So right. it's important that we know the blood of Jesus, of course, covers all of our sins and multiple, and we keep doing that as we, but the realization is, yeah. is we get into the presence of the Lord. And when you get in the presence of the Lord, God does something. So verse 11 is where we want to go because this is, but I wanted you to know that whole context because sometimes yeah. we read this verse 11. And we read it out of context. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So we say that often. Mm-hmm. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. But the fact is, is forgiveness and unforgiveness are the key components of this context. You can't say we're not ignorant of his devices if you don't address forgiveness and unforgiveness. If you don't address those things, because that's what Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about forgiveness and unforgiveness. And by the way, least Satan should take advantage of us we need to forgive. If I'm doing it for your sake, I'm doing it in the presence of God. Least Satan has opportunity to take advantage of us. If Satan takes advantage of us, is because we don't have forgiveness. Yeah. Is because something wasn't forgiven. Last week we dealt with the blood of Jesus, washing your washing the bloodline, 
washing your life, mm -hmm. what the blood of, blood of Jesus can do. Over the few weeks, we've been talking about that. Well, why? Because forgiveness and unforgiveness, unforgiveness is a place where, where Satan can take, he has opportunity. Yeah. And forgiveness is where Satan has no opportunity. The door is completely shut and locked. He needs unforgiveness, meaning he needs a person to sin, not because a person, he's not saying stop sinning because he wants you to stop having fun. He's saying stop sinning because that is now creating the right environment, the right atmosphere for Satan to come and dwell in that place. You're actually creating a habitation for him in that space of dwelling. Now that's very intense, that's very deep. Now watch this, at least Satan should take advantage. The word advantage is very interesting because it, it means this, to have more or greater part or greater share than, than, than what was offered to him or that what he should have. So now look, it have to have a greater part in what you're doing to have a greater share in what you're doing. So this is how he's gonna take advantage. He's gonna, he, he wants you to open up doors. So you, you have a completely sealed home, mm -hmm. right? Completely sealed. Let's say that there's, I don't know what's, I don't know, I was trying to think of something. Pastors, I don't know. Yeah, so, some area of your, your house, you know, let's, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually can't think of anything. But you know, do you have an area that, that, that allows infestation oh. right there's something that allows yeah yeah uh, yeah so with dry, the, with dry the rot root dry wood dry yeah. rot wood or so i don't know yeah it allows something but if it wasn't if the conditions weren't perfect yeah yeah like like i was first thinking of not moss but what is the um mold yeah mold mold needs a, a specific condition yeah if the condition is not there then mold can't grow period right there's no matter what but if the, the outside kid, comes in, but if the conditions are there, yeah, if the conditions are right for mold to filter in, then mold will take a hold of whatever it is, and it won't stop growing until it is captured more and more and more mm -hmm. as yeah. in that whole space. It doesn't want it just a little spot, it just consumes and consumes yeah. and consumes. Because it's alive. So that's what this word take advantage of. Mm -hmm. It means to take not only get into that spot to have to have more part, but it's these. It comes from the uh, the root word means to to want to have more and more and more and more and more and more mm -hmm. to continue to eat of the space. So you make a little if there's a little you know little spot around you know something. I'm, I can't we have none here, but there's a little spot here. Then it just wants more. I want you to get this because this is what the Bible says we shouldn't be ignorant of, and that forgiveness and unforgiveness. Forget unforgiveness is like that. It's like a, the perfect environment for the dry rot to get in. And once the dry rot gets in, it just continues to consume more and more and more. So when you know that God wants to give you freedom from for unforgiveness, he wants to forgive areas. And now it's not only you being unforgiven, it's everybody being unforgiven. It's you forgiving people. It's God forgiving you. It's right. It's people forgiving you. All of that space needs to be handled. When that space is handled, then it actually brings about change. One of the yeah. things when we give the book to, you know, Joe, Joe, uh, Osteen, Jody Osteen's book to people who are dealing with cancer, one of the yeah. major things she deals with is unforgiveness, making sure that she has purged her heart of, of unforgiveness, Breaking making sure that she's, she's written notes, yeah. making sure that she's releasing people, she's forgiven. And that's one of the key components of her, her getting, what is she doing? She's literally taking back ground that the dry rot was allowed to be in, and she's literally re restoring that area where there is no way that it can live there because now it's been dried out. It's it's yeah. it's the humidity is gone, the mm -hmm. the moisture is gone, the all of that is removed, so it's no longer a good environment for it, and so it begins to die. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that's what's going to happen with sickness in your life, sickness in your body. There's people that are saying, "I don't know how to get healed. I don't know how to get healed. You have to get healed." We have had this person pray. I've had so many prayers. This person prayed. They laid right. hands on me. Well, maybe there is a, a space mm -hmm. where you have to just forgive something. Or you have to say, God, forgive this in my bloodline. I told you last week, mm -hmm. I'm asking for God to forgive. Now, there's a whole movement of forgiveness and bloodline. It's, 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 it's all over, right? And we need to do it. But yeah. we don't need to make it a, a new thing, a new, you know, <laughs> a, 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 a new, new wave. A new wave. 
we just need to access what needs to be accessible and then and then know that it's always been around it's been it's i mean it's, it's scriptural it's but you know we, even here in washington when john g lake had the healing rooms we now do zoom healing rooms but whenever a person wouldn't get healed from just regular prayer um he would have them go in another room with his wife who had to give them discernment and discerning of spirits and the lord would show her the root of it so like one time it was a man who had not forgiven his brother for a long time for something like four thousand dollars or something that he never paid back whatever it was so she said i see this an amount of money and i see a man and so he knew immediately and so she said if you go home and you write a letter and forgive him and you come back you'll be healed and that's exactly what happened he did it right away. As soon as he got home, he did it because the punishment was bigger than the offense even, you know. Yeah. It's not worth uh, the punishment. To yeah, hold because on. I, because there, it creates an environment for other things to move in. Yeah. So unforgiveness itself is a probably very real emotion. It's probably very real circumstance. God doesn't hold anything against you and say, I won't forgive you because I'm just so mad. Yeah. He doesn't do that. He has no emotion in it. He has no, he has no, I mean, there's certain things he says, I hate this, but I don't think it's the same emotional feeling. No. He literally just can't work with it. It's so disgusting. It's like yeah, it Limburger cheese. He just can't like get on it, right? It's just, you can't have any part of it. But the realization is, is it's so contrary to him. But he has no emotion to say, oh, you did it. You did it yeah. so many times. I'm so mad. I'm going to yeah. just kill you now. Forget yeah. it. He doesn't have that. Yeah. He, he has the especially with Christ, he has the, within us, the, he has given us the ability and the privilege of asking forgiveness and returning yeah. from our ways and him hearing and really receiving. So there's an environment that we need to understand that unforgiveness creates the perfect environment. So for mold to come in, it has to have, yeah. it has to have moisture, it has yeah. to have a certain temperature, yeah. it has to have, a, it has to have certain thing, you know, certain elements, yeah. Yeah. It's right. So, so that's what, that's what the environment of forget unforgiveness will do. So, you know, and I have heard from lots of women that, that I've ministered to is the reason for unforgiveness often is the fear that it will happen again. If I let them get away with it by telling them I forgive them. But those are two different issues because holding on and reversing the, the offense is unforgiveness and being, you know, bitter towards the person. But setting healthy boundaries is not unforgiveness. Like this guy, he didn't have to say to his brother, here is another $4,000 loan, right? He didn't have to do that. <laughs> he just had to forgive the previous offense and say, you know, next time borrow from a bank. Uh, but, but that's, you know, those are two different issues. So your fear of it happening again shouldn't shouldn't play into your forgiveness of the past yes we we should know that um that the moment the moment we we ask the moment we ask forgiveness mm -hmm. the lord the lord does that yeah. so there is um there's there's such power in in you know just knowing that this prevents the goal is to prevent the enemy from taking advantage mm -hmm. That's the goal. Don't take advantage. Don't let him have more advantage than he does, right? Don't let him do that. Um, there was the, uh, I'll come back to it. It'll come back to me. All right. So, so the next part of the scripture is this, is that um, this, at least Satan should take advantage of us for we, we are not ignorant. We're not ignorant of his devices. And we know, you know, you know, that means not to ignore we don't ignore we're not we're not blind to it of course we're not ignorant to his devices we're, we don't we, we don't want to ignore and pretend like the body of christ is very busy about pretending like there's no devil it's really amazing and then they wonder why am i in trouble it's because you've actually been ignoring the mold <laughs> you've been you've been, you've been first ignoring the fact that you created the perfect environment and then you've ignored the fact that there's mold mm -hmm. 
there's just mold everywhere growing and you're like oh yeah this is great i like this smell and pours you know <laughs> spores all over your face and the realization is is just you know we are pretending like there is no devil mm -hmm. and we we can't pretend like there's no devil because there is a devil and in the Bible tells us that he's going to be around till the end. He's going to be tossed into a pit. Yeah. It's like, I don't know where the doctrine comes in that he's just not worthy of any attention. Right. It's like saying, you know, that any enemy in the earth, in the natural earth, is not worthy of any attention. Well, you don't want to be walking around afraid, but you do need to pay attention. Yeah. And when you pay attention, then you're able to respond properly. Yeah. It says that we're not ignorant of his devices. I, this word devices is, is I, you know, I thought it would mean you know, just schemes and gimmicks. And, and there's some translations, you know, looked up the NLT and it says, we're not, we're not familiar. We are for, for we are familiar uh, to his evil schemes. That to me was seemed very soft to me. I just didn't like that. We are familiar to his evil schemes because the familiar is, is, is a positive way to say, I'm not ignorant, right? So mm -hmm. but you may not be familiar. You may be stupid. You need to know that you're stupid. But if I say I'm familiar, then I'm like, oh, I'm familiar with what he does. But I don't really know if we are. I don't know if we, I think he gets away with a lot enough in all of our lives to, that we should know. We should not be ignorant to his devices, but we, we might be. Look what it says here, the word device. It means, it means this, um, to, to, to we, are, we are not ignorant of his perceptions of his int intellect, right? You have to understand that he is, is his mental, his mental games, yeah. his thoughts. We're not ignorant of his, his mental perceptions. Now that that's the device of the enemy is his mind games, his mind games. And I realize that we, we, we are, I'm watching, you know, I watched a little bit of news today. I'm thinking, gosh, the, there's such mind games. So many mind games going around. Yeah. And, and the realization is we should not be ignorant to him, but I realize that people are. And this is the biggest thing that I find that people are going to be ignorant of in these last days. When I, when I went to someone's life, you know, they were in hospice. And, you know, and they're saying for the quality of life, we're going to cut off their life. <laughs> now, I just want you to know, um, that's a device. That's a, that's, a, that's a perceived thought that is not from God. God does not allow us just to cut off people's lives for the sake of saving their lives. Right. At what point does a person, you say, well, man, you're now, what, what are we going to, now 25 is a person's prime. So let's, let's just, let's just finish them off at 25 so that no one has to have any aging, any problems, right? That's, that just doesn't make any sense. At what point does it become wrong? I know we're already doing it at the young age. We're already trying to do it at mm -hmm. the age of like, well, when is life? When is a per when is a baby a baby? Well, when there's a little foreign object <laughs> operating in the little in someone else's body yeah. and growing, listen, conception. I want you to understand that it's super important that we realize that some of the things that we're going to hear in the next season like with the 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 uh, equality act, you know that whole thing is about being being compassionate. It's about being merciful, yeah. right? But this is this is the strategy of the device. So we don't recognize the device because these are words that people think are good words. We need to be compassionate. We need to uh, they're in love. We need to have mercy. We need that. But the realization is, if the Bible doesn't say it's love. If the Bible doesn't say it's compassion, and, what, and, and if God doesn't agree with it, then it's not true. That's a device. Yeah. You have to understand that that's a device. Some devices will actually look good. Yeah. They won't actually be, they won't actually on the first, on the surface look bad, but they're yeah. a device because the, the, re, the root purpose of it, this word device is not only the perce a perception, a perceived value. How many of you have heard this last two years, the word, it's about optics. It's about optics. That's a great way to say it's about perception. It's about way people, the way people see things, the way people uh, are, are noticing, recognize things, the way yeah. people will see it. That's what the enemy's strategy is, to make sure that we placate to optics. We placate to the way things are going to be recognized, be seen. Right. Yeah. 
well, we've got to have this in place. Well, we don't have any, you know, we got to, we got to just invi invite everybody. Everybody's got to come in. I was listening uh, to communication about why, why are the, the, the colleges so secular? And as I was listening to them, I, I thought it was quite interesting because I've had some conversations with colleges and, and educators and to know that educators don't think the way that these people think that they're thinking. <laughs> they, that they are actually, they're saying, well, they're just trying to infiltrate with all of our, you know, the reason these, these universities that started off as Christian universities are now secular is because they're trying to indoctrinate our, our kids. Well, that's not really how it started. Right. The way it started was, is that they wanted to have more funding. And the way the funding goes is that the funding most often came from liberals who would fund the work yeah. and when the work was funded they said if we're going to fund the work and it's still going on today a lot of a lot of our mm -hmm. christian universities are now shifting to un their colleges now they're universities and because they are universities they need more funding so they open up their board and they open up their their world to yeah i'll bring money in but i need to have some of these some 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 be able to speak in these 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 things and then they introduce their 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 relationships their their people now they appears and people that come in that have a different agenda and now the purpose has shifted but it starts subtly it starts with a good idea yeah. we need to have more money to become a university well that's a good idea well we need to have more money to become a university because we can have more kids after a while the principle that you start with is actually diluted six years later because you now forgot the reason you wanted to have more kids. Yeah. And the reason you wanted to be a university was to be able to get more children, more young people on the bandwagon of being Christian and awesome. serving God yeah. and the cause, the cause is forgotten. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the, real, the realization is then, you know, it gets infiltrated. So wow. we need to know that the enemy's strategy to infiltrate is not going to be what you think. It's going yeah. to look like the other layers if, if and, and, and I want you to know the foundational layer, the foundational layer is going to be forgiveness and unforgiveness. For everything's going to come down to if you yeah. forgiveness and unforgiveness is all going to roll down to that people who are fighting for the you, you the, this these acts, these these the you the what is it the Equality Act and all of these other things the people yeah. who are fighting for these things all comes down to it. follow the trail. I used to say money trail, but follow the forgiveness and unforgiveness trail yeah. and you'll find it. You have all these people who are trying to change the Bible, say there's no more devil, there's no more hell. Follow the money trail, follow the trail. Yeah. It's an unforgiveness and a forgiveness trail. Yeah. It's all coming down to who's forgiven, who's not forgiven, who is forgiving and who is not forgiving, who is unforgiving, who is not unforgiving. It's all going to come down to yeah. that because that's the device of Satan. Satan's device is very clear. And so now if people, you know, if people don't agree with your opinion, they don't have to forgive you. They just, they just, what do they call it? Unfriend you. That's right. They just unfriend you in that they cancel you. Guess what canceling is? Canceling is I don't have to forgive you. I don't have to think about you. I can cut you off. Forget it. Now I, I was flipping through something the other day and there was this, there was some kind of, I don't know what I was doing. Sometimes I get on, uh, there's this thing that I watched and it's just like enough little bits of little things that I, I'm able to capture, but there was a talk show. It was a talk show and the talk show was about what to do and how you feel when someone ghosts you on Facebook. Wow. <laughs> or on any, they go in dating thing. He ghosts me and I was ghosted and it was like, eh, eh, eh. I'm like, seriously, stop it. There. But that's all this cancel culture is all about unforgiveness and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. They forgive the wrong things and, un, and are unforgiving towards the other thing. You know, this, this scripture in the ESV says, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his design. So what you're saying is, it's not just what it seems like. Yeah. But there's a whole design under it. It's all on purpose. In, yes, and I love the idea that it's the design because the design is not just the way the scheme that it's going to work out, but it's also the but he uses the perception of it. Yeah, he uses not only the purpose, the reason I didn't want to use the word purpose, which is the secondary word. Mm -hmm. The first is a mental perception. 
he he's he puts a fault his design is to put a false design in your head yeah a false a false narrative is what it actually is a false narrative when that false narrative is there you have a reason why you should be able to be unforgiving and they should be forgiving and it's like but there is a bitterness that is associated to that that is so dis destructive and so you know i'm just going to leave you with this last scripture uh james chapter 5 15 says in the prayer of faith will save the sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven forgiveness is always associated to healing and i want you to know that if you can step into another receiving forgiveness in your bloodline receiving forgiveness in your life not only because some people are are forgiven and they don't act like they're forgiven they're forgiven and they don't they don't um they still are victims in their minds. I address people quite often when I hear someone, you know, tearing themselves down, talking themselves down, there's no way healing can get into them because they don't actually, that person will not feel that, feel worthy enough. So I want them to feel forgiven. I want them to receive forgiveness. I want them to accept yeah. forgiveness. So forgiveness is not only what I keep towards someone else or I don't let towards someone else or what God, what God towards me, but even you towards you. You have to learn to forgive yourself. You have to learn to forgive others. You have to learn to be forgiven. Wow, come on. You have to learn to accept forgiveness. You have to learn to accept an apology. I've, I have people who never apologize, and I know people who never accept an apology. When you when you apologize, then it gets even heightened. It's like, I'm sorry. It's like, well, you shouldn't be sorry because you just, you, 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 you. Well, that person is unforgiving, but they don't know how to receive forgiveness. I think sometimes a person who's unforgiving doesn't know how to receive forgiveness, that they feel so bitter and so hard towards themselves that they don't know how to receive it. So I want you to whatever. <laughs> Forgive, be forgiven, accept forgiveness, yeah. give forgiveness. Why? Because you're literally going to dry out the area that the enemy would love to sit. Yeah. That you're going to dry it up. You're going to dry up that space that the enemy would love to sit in and to create problems, to create challenges. And you're going to, you're going to just literally destroy uh, his environment. Then in the presence of the Lord, I love how he says, I'm in, I get into the presence of the Lord to do this forgiveness stuff. Mm -hmm. The presence of the Lord, there's no room for unforgiveness. Yeah. In the presence of the Lord, there's no dry rot, right? There's no, yeah. there's no, there's no, there's none of that environment. I love the simple thing. He says, just bring it all into the presence of the Lord because yeah, every, season, it's a humidifier, not humidifier, what is it when you dry? Dehumidifier, de <laughs> right? He can bring, he's, he's going to dry it all out for you and you're going to get a different perspective. Now, why? Why? Because perception on you know, God's side and perception on the devil's side are contrary. Yeah. And so if I get in the presence of the Lord, I get God's perception. If I stay into my circumstance of unforgiveness, I get the devil's perception. Yeah. And then that he will cause more and more trouble. There was a woman I've heard. I've told the story, but this is super important that you know the power of this is uh, when I was feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> as a young communicator, a young preacher, wanting to preach, I should say, not even having any doors to preach, uh, was preaching on the street here and there. The Lord said, I want you every Sunday after service to go down the convalescent home. You're feeling sorry for yourself. I want you to see people who are in worse condition than you. I went in there and I was, first of all, very like judgmental. It's amazing when you have a, a bitter and unforgiving heart, how judgmental you are. I walk in, I'm like, it stinks in here. Ooh, don't touch me you know, there's all kinds of screaming and noises and stuff that's going on it's very intense environment but it's but when you can walk in that intense environment and don't feel compassion you feel judgment then you have a problem yeah that's i'm talking about me i'm talking about me i'm talking about me this is me i'm like arr, arr, that's true it's not like pee, pee right all of that was judgment all of that stuff was in my mind and that what the lord was showing me which i didn't know he was showing me you are unforgiving. You are bitter. You need to get right. You need to repent, Tracy. You need to do this. So I went in there. And as I was in there thinking, feeling sorry, I started feeling sorry for all these people. I realized how well I was doing, how well off God had provided for me. I wasn't in bed. I wasn't in how one of those circumstances, mm -hmm. how blessed I was. And so I remember going to this one lady, she'd been bedridden with lupus. 
Uh, she had been bedridden so long. She had gained so much weight that she they couldn't hardly move her out of the bed. She had ro they'd roll her over periodically, for bed sores on on one side, and then she'd be black and blue on the other side, and then they have to oh. roll over and black and blue and just roll over. And they just kept doing this, and she was just getting more and more just damaged. Her body was just damaging, blood co coagulating into those areas. It just absolutely the most hideous things her face breaking out with sores she was just being eaten up tortured. eaten up and tortured a body eaten up and tortured and i remember thinking lord i want to see her heal let's see her heal we've seen healings healings in the in that space i want to see her heal and i remember praying and i said god how can we do this and he said she all she has to do he showed me the scenario he showed me the person and he's and i didn't know i said this is what i see and this is what I, this is the person I see. And this is how your heart is. And the Lord says, you, if you, your heart is like this because you're bitter. And if you will simply forgive that person, if you'll forgive her, then you will be set free and God will heal you. She looked at me, tears running down her eyes. I remember, and then she turns over away from me and she says, I can't. She says, I can't, she refused. She, she was, chose her she walk. chose, she chose that environment and her body was an outworking, was a physical manifestation, a, 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 a yeah, what are you working like, like, I, yeah, working picture, an allegory, an al analogy picture right there for mm -hmm. us to see how it works in us and works yeah. that way in our spirit works that way in our soul, but it, she couldn't even believe to get healed. There's something about n not being able to forgive that hinders right. your believing. There's something about not being able to receive forgiveness that hinders your faith yeah. to believe. There's something that, that is, it, that's about, that's super powerful about forgiveness. I receive forgiveness that allows you to be healed. Rise up and take up in your bed, which is easier for me to say be your sins are forgiven or to rise up and take your bed and walk the, yeah. the, for for there is no difference it's one sweep it's one it's one manifestation yeah. and if a person can receive the gift of faith right now the prayer of faith that we're going to pray we're going to pray this prayer of faith i know you're supposed to be in your healing rooms and some of you probably had to jump off already but i want you to understand that this is super important that you are going to be set free just as you let something go you let someone go and you let yourself go. I don't know which category you fit in, but let's get into the presence of the Lord because you can, as, as Amanda's saying, bring all of it into the presence of the Lord and you will find healing taking place in your body. Yeah. There's so many people crippled, bent over because of unforgiveness. It's the, it's a rot, rotting of the bones. It's the, you know, that, 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 that part of your bone that, that begins to get porous what they call that uh but Mollet? yeah but the, it's a part of it's your bone gets porous it's an age a lot oh, of people osteoporosis. yeah osteoporosis that that is being healed Amen. because unforgiveness is being taken out of your life it's there's no yeah. bitterness there's no place for it and the bible says it clearly it's unforgiveness is rotting bitterness is rotting of the bones and so we're going to take all of that stuff just by simply saying Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. Jesus, I release forgiveness. And I give forgiveness. I forgive. And Jesus, I, I walk in forgiveness. Lord, we thank you yeah. that the blood of Jesus in this 40, in this 50 days, we release the blood of Jesus over our lives so that we can walk, live in, and embrace forgiveness. We release it in the name of Jesus. And we say, be made whole, yes. body, soul, and spirit. There's not, a, uh, there's not a part of you that cannot receive forgiveness. And there's not a part of you that cannot give forgiveness. Yes. We change your per perception your on the circumstance. Yes. We change your perception. Think about what the enemy tries to do. Well, I'm mad at them because they did this. That, there's a perception there. Now, God has a perception too. We change the perception right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. The perception is shifted. Yes, Lord. Wow. Wow. The device of the enemy is your perception, right. is the perception. And he doesn't, he should not have yes. more, uh, more of your perception than he should, is what the scripture is telling us. Yeah. Don't let him occupy more of your perception than what he should, right? Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you go sin 
and sickness and disease flees. Amen. Amen. All right. Hopefully Amen. that's made sense. That's been that's been a rich night. Punching the devil with the power of the Holy Spirit, what you were preaching, and the, that, that the power of God. The devil's an enemy, and he's a bad devil. Yes, God's a good God, and yes. then we're also going to walk in and what I think and protect yourself in this society. I, I believe that the number one strategy for this year. Remember, I told you in the past, the strategy in the past was um, uh, number one thing would be depression. Yes. Bitterness is going to be the problem bitterness is going to be the problem because you can be depressed and not bitter towards anybody yeah. you can but this is it's, it's going to be people are still going to be depressed but there's going to be bitterness yeah. bitterness always leads to a vengeance and anger yeah. or some kind of mm, lashing out yeah. and so be aware of of not allowing your heart to receive or be or mm -hmm. you know don't be open don't be easily offended yeah. this that's the word of the lord this year don't yeah. allow offense to come and don't cause it and yeah. i think i think so we, let's protect ourselves let's protect yes. our families let's make sure that everything happens i just love i want to just dig into this i wish i had more time but if you just dig into the that little verse 10 i think it's verse 10 and 11 how paul is so quick to forgive he's like if you forgive i'm forgiven too and another version says if you if you've done it this thing i've already done is i it's already finished He's like, if you've yeah. done it, it's already finished in my mind. Yeah. He, he's like so quick. Don't, don't, don't let that person be in this situation too long. <laughs> be quick. Be quick yeah. to forgive. But I don't feel like I can get into the presence of the Lord, get his perception. I don't know who this is for, but God wanted this today. Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. I believe this is encouraging to you. And just walk in the presence of the Lord. Walk in that. Yes. Good to see you guys. And um, amen. Anything yeah. else? No, that's it. And uh, of course, well, this Sunday, we'll speak be with together. power. We'll be together and yes. Sunday morning. And we've got lots of fun stuff coming up. So get the app. And if you have not yeah. been following right. Raining Doc Citadel, uh, like Raining and Ruling yes. with the Crown, you know, Rain, Powerful. Raining, then uh, join that. And the whole message I taught tonight is there so you can get those scriptures. Oh, join the movement. Get in the movement. Yes, the army of the Lord. It's about to move on. Amen. All right, you guys, blessings. Talk to you soon.